Hey everybody, welcome back. 40 wins in a row. How about that? Last one was very easy. Just press the spacebar enough you win. This one's starting pretty good. D3, FB, J8, CP. We got, uh... Well, flying is nice. HP is nice. Unicorn Stump. I mean, Unicorn Stump, here's a hot take for you to start today's episode. It might be one of the easiest items to win with. Literally, all we need is any uh, orbital, AoE, damage over time, and then press the space bar when enemies are around. And, and we're, like, completely set. So, I'm not gonna act like the run is, is in a tough spot. <laughs> yes, uh, like, from an attribute standpoint, we're a little bit... We're low on speed, we're a little light on rate of fire. You know, the, the actual damage stat is okay, but there's room to grow. Let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, th this run's looking nice so far. And, I, you know, Isaac, it's a unique series for me. Obviously, like, I, I don't care about this item at all, but um, it's a unique series for me. This is no longer a series where there's moment-to-moment, -moment, you know, thrills. And that sounds bad. But I don't see it that way. You know, like, sure, some of the excitement in a, in some of these series is like, will he or won't he? Will he beat the rat? Will he beat the rat punch out? You know, will he beat A20? Will he beat the uh, Shichimin warrior? <laughs> no. Um, but Isaac's different. Isaac is a podcast, but it's also like, it's a routine. And I, the older I get, the more I like routine. I've come to respect the routine. Routine gets a terrible rap. I don't know what, somebody, people have put out the hit. I want all that, by the way. People put out the hit on routine. You know, why don't you mix it up a little bit? Variety is the spice of life. Um, you know, you gotta confuse your muscles. You know, this is like... Is the is anathema? This is seven cents, right? But we don't have any money. We don't even have a conversation. I'm happy to get Steam Sale, but you know that was dumb. I probably should have just gotten tarot cloth. Um, I don't know why I thought I would be able to get it with somehow fifteen cents lets you buy a fifteen cent item and then a seven cent item. Anyway, uh. I'm I'm always out here. I'm out here to bat for the people who are not thrill seekers. I'm out here to bat for the people who love routine. For the people like me who, you know, if they go to bed at the time that they always go to bed, they fall asleep in 10 minutes. If they go to bed half an hour after they normally go to bed, it takes them 2 hours to fall asleep. I'm with you. The thing about a routine is that it takes active work to maintain. I think a lot of people miss out on that, you know? Routine gets such a bad rap, but there's something I read it several years ago. But I stand by this. It's actually... It's been like a principle on which... I wouldn't say I've lived my life, but like I, I think back to from time to time when I'm looking for like inspiration for a... Jeez, man. I guess we'll take Tick and hope to swallow it. Uh, when I'm looking for, like, inspiration for a project or a holiday, or not a holiday, a hobby or something like that, um, it's the idea that inspiration is very, it's easy to come by, you know? Without sounding ridiculous, perhaps. Um, you know, when people are inspired, it's very easy to get work done. You know, when you're like, I have a passion project. <sighs> Uh, it, it's not hard to find the time to get it done, but inspiration is also fleeting. Let's let's peep this curse room, okay? We should have done this earlier. Inspiration is also fleeting. Everybody's been there, and I don't mean on vacation. You know, you get really excited about something, like maybe oh, I got Duolingo. I'm learning Spanish. Then for like two weeks, you're like every waking minute, I'm learning Spanish. Hola, me amo Ryan. Como se dice, uh... That's not... Is that how you say Anyway, it doesn't matter. I learned all my Spanish from Dan, embarrassingly enough. Um, 
But then, you know, you break the routine and all of a sudden you're like, eh, I don't really want to learn Spanish that much anymore. I'd rather play Rainbow Six Siege. And then you fall out of it for a while and you're like, well, I shouldn't force myself to do it if I don't want to do it. And then six months later, you're like, como se dice hola? You know, you don't, you don't have the, you, you've atrophied a little bit. That's why, you know, and th this was what I was talking about when I was talking about the, the lesson learned. You know, to be able to be inspired is a good thing, of course, but it's also more than being passionate. Being, like, reliable, and, and reliable with yourself is important, you know? When you don't want to do the work, still getting the work done, at least to a minimum standard, and then coming back the next day, that's the true mark of... of an admirable pursuit, in my opinion. And that's kind of where we're at in Isaac. It's very easy to be excited to, you know, make content for something that's brand new. Thanos got added to Fortnite. 45 kill compilation. You see, the reason I don't make videos like that is not... Most people think it's because I don't have the skills to do that. It's not true. I Honestly, I, off camera, I had a, a Fortnite win where I got 99 kills. And a lot of people don't believe it, but it's the uh, honest-to-goodness truth. In fact, I could probably just do it on demand right now. I'm, a, I'm really good at video games. But where Isaac is at, and I, uh, you know, this is where I'm at, like, in a lot of things in my life. It's in a good place. It, am I like, man, I can't wait to see what's happening in Isaac today? No, not really. But I, I get, like, a, a lot of satisfaction from having the time... To like, you know, talk about what's on my mind in Isaac while also exercising this muscle I've built up over like a decade of playing this freaking game. <laughs> I like routine. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. It's the same, you know, working out. But mostly, you know, until recently I've been doing the same workout for like three months. Just changing the weight as necessary. And, you know, was it boring? No. Honestly not. Um... You know, I, 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 I appreciate the simplicity of just kind of keeping the same thing going over and over and over. Um, why am I holding a Hanged Man card, dude? You know, I, I think there, there's like a meditative pleasure in routine that, you know, it, I'm not saying that the media is trying to paint a narrative that routine is bad. But, you know, when you, routine is always uh, or seemingly always painted as a negative thing in media. And I think if your routine is, you know, not conducive with who you are as a human being, then yeah, I get it. But when your routine owns like mine does, there's a quiet satisfaction that comes with a life lived according to your own principles. Marcus Aurelius. My favorite uh, stoic quote is from Marcus Aurelius. It said, Behaving according to one's nature is lit. Marcus, look it up. It's on WikiQuote. It's a real quote from the Enchiridion, where the Great Plains begin. I had to spin you a yarn here, by the way, because it's a little bit of a slow Isaac episode so far. <laughs> kind of hoping that on the next floor we'll pick up something capable of growing our damage. It is my fault, legitimately, for, for getting hit. Um, we we only got hit once on the floor. We really should have just gone... Okay. We really should have just gone to our... Uh, our curse room right off the bat. It would have been much more advantageous for us than what we ended up doing. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, dude, I would rather have invincibility every room than have invincibility... Once every three rooms. Houndst ever. We just gotta... We gotta live with it here. It's gonna take us a while. Let's just assume this floor is kind of a wash. It'll take us until we get to, like, the deal with the devil to really... Start to... Make things tick here. Hold on. In the last ten seconds, I now have seven private Discord messages. Let's see what happened. Oh, it's, it's Team Unity. What are we play tomorrow, boys? I agree. What are we play tomorrow, boys? 
Gulp, good trinket, but, you know. I mean, why am I holding the Hanged Man card? And Gulp is not a trinket, it's a pill. Get it right, Eggman. Nice routine, Grandpa. Yeah, you're routinely calling things by the wrong name, dummy. Hey, now. That's my inner monologue. It's not supposed to become my outer monologue. I would like a bomb so that I could reroll Book of Shadows. We a Penny might do it, but probably not. We honestly should probably, at least on our way back, pick up Book of Shadows before we reroll it for obvious reasons. Oh, this is an incredible room. This is like exactly what we need right now. Reroll engines and also like consumables popping out of everywhere. I really, like to be honest with you, Sure, that's not bad. But to be honest with you, we need, um, yikes. To improve this run. This, if we leave this floor without having gotten some kind of damage increase, whether that's an orbital or, you know, a traditional damage increase, it will be miserable. Robo Baby 2.0 is not good enough. Hourglass is, uh, maybe just not good, full stop. Satanic Bible is great, um, but... HP is not our problem right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of sticking with what we got. I don't care even if that's gonna become wait what. It's not that big of a deal. Now stigmata is fine. It's not gonna change the timbre of the run incredibly early here, but it is helpful. And I do you know I'm not blaming the seed actually. I'm blaming myself. We we took damage in a very very. Embarrassing is not the right word, but we shouldn't have taken damage and compromised our deal with the devil. I would feel much more, like, annoyed with the game right now if we had gotten our deal with the devil and still been in the same state. But that's just what you gotta do, you know? Sometimes you gotta try your best, and if the game doesn't meet you halfway, then you can be mad at the game in some way or another. Um, but uh, I have not... Uh, I've not given the game the opportunity to screw me yet. I'm telling you. A single orbital. This run is done. Sack dagger? Like, that's my ideal deal with the devil item right now. Just traded a gulp for a gulp. You know what they say, a gulp for a gulp leaves everybody satiated. Nobody's ever said that, but... I don't like the word gulp. It's not, it, you know, I... I do sometimes, I don't think it's our generation. You know, if you're part of my generation. But I think that people on the internet are sometimes babies about things. Um, myself included. Like, so I'm like, eh, somebody said that I was stupid because I did a bad thing in a video game. You know, even that, like, a day after I complain about stuff like that, I'm like, you know, that's dumb. I should just remember that I could bench press that person and I hate them and not pay attention to it. But it is what it is. You know, everybody's got their own coping strategy. But I'm not, I'm definitely when people, oh, it's an orbital, dude. When people are like, please don't say moist. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I'm like, you know, that's just one of those things... You gotta accept that sometimes life's gonna hit you with some stuff that's like a 1 out of 10 on Pleasant and there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. I'm not one of those people, but I will say gulp is a word that just, it feels wrong coming out of my mouth. So I know we have HP. We'll definitely take Succubus. This is really good. I don't remember how much HP we have. Sorry, Demon Judgment. Wow, he lived. Um, we definitely have enough. Try that. I think that's where I'm going to call it, just because of Curse of the Unknown. Definitely take Succubus. We should gulp our trinket. I mean, that's the whole reason we were holding the pills. Forget Cambian Conception. Let's head down. We had so much more HP than I thought we did. Anyway. Now. 
The run is actually, like, unlosable. <laughs> Finally. Four floors into the game, we've managed to take all the tension out of it. No, the tension is maybe he'll say something I disagree with. Anyway. I do, th I, I, you know, it's been on my mind, because the Sekiro, uh, the, the discourse related to Sekiro turned pretty toxic. And I mean that, you know, sincerely. And I hope that you take it sincerely and not just as sour grapes. Because, you know, it, with, with respect to the circle of the NLSS, at least, I'm amongst the most lenient... And I, I do think I have a relatively thick skin for content creation, but people were getting to some serious, like, not personal attacks like, you know, I'm gonna come to your house and bench press you. But, like, is NL okay? It's toxic in its own, like, bizarrely patronizing, well-meaning way, like... You know, go easy on him, he's just stupid. And you're like, you don't even understand. And then you, you get into like this weird echo effect where you like, you know, somebody is rude to you. And this is just part of the business of, of community management, which is a small sliver of content creation. But, you know, you, you, you go, hey, you know, like when you were rude, it made me feel bad. And then people will reply to that and be like, well, but now that you've told me that I was rude to you, that made me feel bad, so aren't we, like, even? And you're like, well, no, because, like, I mean, you were the person who... I mean, you started it. <laughs> like, to to call someone... I understand, by the way, because I, I, I'm in this position on every fourth NLSS, where I say something that I think is a joke, and then uh, somebody takes it, what I feel in the moment is too harshly, and then... You know, I'm like, well, I made you feel bad, but simultaneously, your feeling bad made me feel bad. So we're pretty much even. You know, what's the wint tweet? Like, or the drill tweet? Sorry. <laughs> the, turns out there's absolutely no difference between right and wrong, you idiot. Dude, we're getting out of this floor. Everything's going hunky dory now. I understand, nobody wants to feel bad, but, you know, sometimes you gotta point out when you're being rude. Even if it makes that person feel... If anything, like... I've come to accept... That, uh... The internet is always gonna be kind of a crucible for criticism. You know, anonymity combined with parasocial relationships... Combined with, you know... You don't shoot the messenger on this one, but for whatever reason, video game culture. And, you know, I've been... I've been a, an engine for that for sure as well in my life, but video game culture is, I wouldn't necessarily say toxic, but a little acerbic for sure, uh, as compared to, I don't know, like, you know, the woodworking community. And, uh, you know, I, I actually think I have a pretty healthy relationship. Like, compared to a lot of content creators, I think I do a good job of keeping things in perspective, and in particular when someone's like, you know, he's dumb, and then I look at their Reddit posts, and they were like, they got a year of history on my subreddit being like, this episode is really good. I'm like, you know what? It's just the same way I talk about Game of Thrones. Where, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, I, at one point I really love Game of Thrones, but the new episodes kind of stink. I think the show's lost its way. Um, the difference, I guess, is I keep my comments regarding the intelligence of the show creators to private channels for the most part. Um... So I, I, I do understand that, but simultaneously, I always, whenever a situation like this comes up where, I mean, like, the Sekiro stuff was getting pretty bad. It was getting on my nerves in a big way, which is why I just bulk released the rest of the episodes and washed my hands clean. Um, if I could even, you know, via the comments, make, like, ten people be nicer in the future, not just to me, but in general, then I'm, I'm willing to bear the cost. And that's not to be noble, but, you know. You get the idea. I've hit this weird, I don't know, I wouldn't call it like, um, I'm trying to think, it's a melancholy. And it's not a melancholy for me personally, it's a melancholy, a requiem for the internet. Cause like, I, you know, I, I have a weird muscle memory about going on Facebook. Even though I never find anything interesting on Facebook, it's like built into my brain's habits. That, you know, okay, I've checked Twitter, now I'll check Facebook, and then... You know, it's just the the one person I follow who still makes posts is like, uh, 
you know, it's hard being a mom. And I'm like, I feel you, sister, but, like, that's not what I'm here for. Um, we'll definitely grab this. So th a lot of what I see on my Facebook now are sponsor posts and ads that Facebook has decided to monetize me because they see that I'm on the way out. And there's just awful, awful comments. Truly terrible stuff. Personal attacks on the people in the advertisement. Uh, awful discourse. Stuff that people... You know, if they said it in public, they'd, they'd take a fist to the face for sure. And then I, out of morbid curiosity, I look at the person's Facebook profile. And more often than not, there's like a lot of sadness on their profile. There's a lot of like, you know, none of my friends came to my birthday party style of posts. And I'm with two minds about that. <laughs> One mind is maybe if you weren't such an a-hole. People will come to your birthday party. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta tackle A before B shows up. But then I'm also like, yeah, okay, I see that, you know, you're you're an angry person and I think there's this weird cycle I, I think that a lot of people don't find themselves being conscious to on the internet. I, I've been trying to break the cycle like Khaleesi, you know? Where and unsuccessfully I might add, but you know being online subjects you to criticism that criticism makes you feel bad it puts you in a worse mood as a result you treat other people maybe a little bit more harshly because you feel like that's the standard of being treated online and it's just like this weirdly self-perpetuating current of like negativity that goes around and i don't mean negativity like you know i didn't like the episode of the tv show i mean negativity like like, really negative stuff. Not necessarily related to media. So, you know, like, the people who, you know, make the posts on Facebook get attacked. They're getting attacked by people whose lives are miserable in their own way as well. That misery leads them to lead an even more miserable life. And it just you just want to go to them and say, dude, maybe you'd be happier if you stopped... Calling the dude in the Dr. Utker pizza ad a soy boy. <laughs> it's probably why people aren't coming to your birthday party. They're worried you're going to call him a soy boy or something. You know? Like, I'm not I'm not advocating for the idea that um, you should always, in 100% of circumstances, no matter what, be nice to everybody. I'm just saying I'm, I'm conscious of my role in this as well. You know, and, and it helps to put it in perspective. I'm not even saying like, well, you know, I don't take criticism from people because their lives are worse than mine. That's not true. Well, I mean, I, it might be true, but like, that's not really where I'm coming at it from. It's more from the perspective of like, it's just sort of like, fills you with a sense of, a sense of melancholy. That people are mean on the internet, not just to me, but, you know, in fact, people are predominantly pretty nice to me. Especially compared to some other content creators, but... That, you know, a lot of the meanness on the internet comes from, like, people who have, like, their own source of trauma. Not even trauma, but just, like, you know, discontent in their own life. And then that discontent, you know, causes them to behave in what I would consider to be unacceptable ways for other people. And probably makes, you know, it just doubles down. It's like an isolating aspect, right? Like, you know, maybe you, you're not, like, socially very popular in, like, 8th grade. You spend what might be considered too much time on the internet. You get exposed to these ideas you don't have the critical thought to really work through. You know, at, at that young of an age. And it leads to you being, like, even more isolated. And then you start to think... You know, like, this world is screwed up, nobody, like, believes me about it, people don't agree with me, I'm the only person enlightened enough to have these ideas, but really, like, over a long enough time scale, you kind of have done it to yourself. I don't know. I'm getting in, like, I'm not a, a behavioralist, you know, I'm just saying from, from my experience on the internet. And this is not me saying get outside, it's just, I'm not, I have no solution to the problem, except that, you know, if you're experiencing this sort of criticism, I do think it helps to, to know the root cause, and, you know, stop blaming Timmy from Edmonton. Start, uh, 
you know, ha have some empathy for Timmy from Edmonton, but also mute him because his comments will, you know, have a terrible impact on your psyche. But think about him from time to time and go, you know what? I hope he found what he was looking for. I hope he found, you know, whatever it, whatever was missing in his life that that allowed him to have the time to be riled up about, you know, something mundane. I hope they, somebody, some nice man or lady pulled him out of the doldrums and, and saved him before it was too late. That's pretty much where I'm at with that. <laughs> and I think, it, I, I don't think this sounds like I'm, like I'm done with it. It's quite the opposite. Like, if anything, I think this is part of the reason I have kind of a healthy relationship with it is I, I sort of understand that like, you know, the people who are rude, so that there are people who are rude who are just like, you know, they're just doing it to be a troll. And that's one thing. And that's, you know, frustrating, but simultaneously, doesn't really affect you because there's just always going to be jerks everywhere. Ever tell you about the time, you know, it was like right after we got our car, Kate had to change lanes. And then when she tried to change lanes, the dude in the lane that she wanted to change to uh, sped up to block her and then did like a finger wag. Like, you're not taking my spot in this lane. Like, there's always going to be some semblance of people like that. And I think for like mental health reasons, like the... The faster you can get to the point that's like, if you can just laugh at that kind of deliberate jerkness, like, that's where you want to be. But then there are people who are like, well-meaning, they're really into your content, but they're like, you really disappointed me when you skipped this item room in Isaac. And then you're just like, you know, I, I now, I wouldn't say like I have sympathy, because it is also taxing you know, cerebrally in its own way. But I, I do, I guess. Without enabling the behavior, I do have sympathy, because... I, I hope I'm not like, you know... I, I hope I am preaching to the converted, I should say. But that's like... It's behavior that is... Maybe not troubling, but... Indicative of an imbalance in life somewhere. So that's kind of where I've come down on it, you know? And that's that's the that's the meditation I've reached after uh, after like eight years of doing this online. You know, very rarely will I go out of my way to spotlight somebody who's like, "Hey, Bali, I hope your dome gets cracked." But occasionally, I think if there's like a learning lesson where you can be like, "I think you're well-meaning, but you've crossed the line," and it might be good for you in the future. To understand that, like, you know, you're not tweeting at Outback Steakhouse here. Like, this, this is a person on the other end of this. And, you know, I can take it up to a point when I will retire and leave the internet forever. But, you know, simultaneously, you know, you should accept that, you know, if you feel bad that your words make other people feel bad sometimes, congratulations. Welcome to humanity. That's that's a sign in a good way that, that you're a well-meaning individual. That's you know step one I think of being a good person is wanting to do better. Sometimes that bad feeling is a good feeling. You know it's it's a feeling of not being where you want to be and, and then improving on it as a result. I don't know, man. We picked up mom's knife and then this episode got real philosophical. Maybe that's why we shouldn't be picking up this item. You know, it was on my mind this weekend, because as much as, like, the, it's silly because it's about video games, like, it's also not silly, because this is, like, what I do. I mean, like, I spent, like, 35% of the waking hours in my 20s. But they're not even waking hours. Like, 35% of the decade of my 20s making videos online. So when people are like, I love his videos, but he's stupid. I'm like, you know what? That's an insult to me on a spiritual level, not even an intellectual level. Also, play me in Jeopardy if you think you're so smart. Um, but anyway, I think I got my point across well there. I'm in a good place, I sincerely. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See you.